Chapter 7, this will definitely be a part 2 message just because of the magnitude of what is being announced to us here. And I, I apologize in advance for those of you who may not be studying with us, maybe you're visiting. We come now to a portion of Scripture that is very technical, not so much in its content, but because of where it's placed in the book of Revelation. Up until now, we have enjoyed pretty much a chronological march through the book of Revelation. Now we come to what? Are you ready, Bible students? Jot it down. There's note sheets in front of your seat. Grab it. Very important. Mark it down next to your margin. We now come to what is mentioned or presented as a parenthetical chapter of the Bible. In this case, Revelation chapter 7 is a parenthetical insert. Meaning this, and here's your definition, that as the chronology goes on, the Lord in revealing to the Apostle John futuristic events puts a comma. That comma ends or is at the ending verse of chapter 6. There's a, I know it's a period in your Bible, but there should be a comma there. That comma now stops Revelation chapter 6, last verse. Then God, so to speak, grabs John by the face and turns his eyes toward two different set of events. Phase 1 and phase 2. Things that will happen that, in a sense, are an overview of the last... Is this too... Are you getting it? This is tough stuff. I mean, i got to tell you, a lot of people don't get this. So maybe you can get the CD and review it later and study it. If you get it, if you don't get it, whatever. Chapter 8 commences the last three and a half year period of the seven year tribulation that's coming to the earth. Revelation chapter 7 is, an, is a parenthetical insert that explains some things before chapter 8 begins. In other words, the three and a half years have come, first three and a half. There is a pause. God now talks to John. John tells us what he sees. When John in chapter 7 is done speaking to us, then guess what happens? It picks up again and it goes. Are you with me? It's kind of like a pause on your tape player. You just hit pause. Here in chapter 7, God hits pause. And begins to show John some very fantastic things. The understanding of this chapter is all important to the remainder of the book. You miss this chapter and you will never understand the remainder of the book. And you will always be misunderstanding eschatology or the prophetic study of God's word.